All right, a tough loss tonight by the Padres. It looked like they were just going to get shut out at one point in this game. Excuse the voice, by the way. For some reason, I have something in my throat tonight, but I still wanted to make a video. Um, Shota Imanaga was on the mound. So as I was driving home today, because I was listening to Sammy Lovett on the post-game show, and he's talking about Imanaga's performance and how, like, just how good he has been. This is who he has been this year. And I'm thinking, yeah, the Padres, they were supposed to lose this game, right? You go into it, a bullpen game. Imanaga's the NL Cy Young Award winner as of now. I get it. It's only May 7th, but he's, still, he's been dominant this year. You're at Wrigley. Imanaga, it's not just his numbers going in, but he shoved. And you still had the opportunity to go win the game, though. You know, that, that's what still stings about this is Mud was saying on the broadcast multiple times, like almost willing it to happen, that pro far home run. Like all it takes is one. And they had a runner on base, obviously, in that spot. All it takes is one because the fastball was working. The combo for Imanaga, the fastball and the splitter. And Manny was having a hard time. He struck out multiple times tonight. How many times did he strike out tonight? Three times. 0 for 4 tonight for him. Um, yeah, it, it was just, it's not like it was a, and I agree with, uh, I think it was Mud on the broadcast, saying how it's not like it was a hard at bat, like a, an uncomfortable at bat, I should say. Not hard, but uncomfortable at bat. That's not what it looks like because he's not blowing you away with velocity. It's just his pitches are, it's, it's deceptive, obviously, because that splitter looks like a fastball. And then it just slows down, you know? And so, yeah, it's, I can see how he is being dominant this year and how tough that is to hit. Um, you know, the Padres, they had opportunities. I mean, late in the game, I think Imanaga was out of the game at this point, but a ball deep, and it was caught, uh, I believe, on the warning track in left. Um, there was that. But really, I think what it comes down to today was the bullpen performance there at the end. And Randy Vasquez goes four and a third, one earned run, no walk, six punch outs. I put this out on, on Twitter earlier today after this outing, after he was done, pitching in the fifth inning after he had struggled a little bit this year when he was up at the big league level with the Padres, you pitch into the fifth, you give up one earned run on a Bellinger home run. Of course, he comes back for the Padres series, you know, in the middle of this series and hits a bomb. You give up one run. You don't walk anyone, no free passes. I'll take that any day. And then Adrian Morhone, is he working his way into high leverage spots, deserving those high leverage situations? Because he has a 208 ERA this year. Inning and two-thirds from him, no runs, no free passes, couple punch-outs. And I bring up that question partly because of Adrian's performance, but also because you got Matt Suey and you got De Los Santos tonight, who both give up an earned run each. De Los Santos gives up a home run. Matt Suey, I believe, gave up a home run the other night. And so it's like, does Mike Schultz have that guy to go to right before Robert Suarez when you have a two to one lead? And it doesn't seem like that. Schultz will probably say, yeah, we're, com we're comfortable in Wandy, we're comfortable in Matsui, we're comfortable in uh, De Los Santos. Maybe he'll even mention Morahone as well. But Morahone, it feels like he's not pitching in those high leverage spots right now. Now, the game was close, but I'm talking about like, when, he, when he pitched today, it was close, but I'm more seven, eight innings, those situations, leading into Robert Suarez. And Suarez got up today. He was throwing in the pen. So I'm not so sure he's going to be available to pitch tomorrow. I know there's a day off before the Dodgers series, but I hope the Padres take into account how many times they get a guy up, even if he doesn't go into the game. I put out my bullpen usage charts, and that is the pitch counts when they go into games for the last five days leading into that next day's game, right? But that doesn't put into account did that guy get up yes did, did he get up the day before and throw because we know Suarez threw yesterday uh what five out save right five out situation and then today he throws in the bullpen so if he throws tomorrow that would be three consecutive days of at least getting up so I don't know if they're going to do that tomorrow but 
you're you're trying to win this series. This is one of those kind of like the D-backs, kind of like the Phillies. You don't know where the Cubs are going to be in postseason positioning when all things are said and done. Are they going to be uh, fighting with the Padres for a final playoff spot for home field advantage in one of these seed positions? You just don't know. So you'd love to take this series. And Dylan Cease is going to be on the mound. You know, these Dylan Cease games, kind of like the Darvish games, got to win those games because you don't know what's going to happen with the others. And again, what stings is you got the good performance from Randy Vasquez. You got a good inning and two thirds from Moore at home. So you add that all up and what, how many, how many innings is that? Four and a third plus an inning. So what, that's six innings of work right there. And you toss it over to the bullpen. Six innings, one run, essentially, from your starter, Vasquez and Morahone, which is we knew like that was going to be the combo going into tonight. So it was frustrating. The offense couldn't really get much going. Um, but Imanaga, he's again, he's the best pitcher in the National League probably right now. And Dylan Cease is close to that. That's why like capitalizing, winning tomorrow's game is important. Obviously, you'd love it because you can't take away the win, but also, you know, going to the Dodgers series or going into the off day for the Dodgers series. Winning both series on the road, that's going to make Padre fans feel good. Um, I don't really, I don't, I just don't believe in momentum in baseball just because it's just so different from other sports. Like it, it really depends on who's the guy on the mound, who is that guy that your offense is facing, you know, who's on the mound for you. Do you have trust in the bullpen? How are those guys doing, right? Who are the guys in the box for the other team? There, there's so many things that go into it. But tonight, it, yeah, it was disappointing. But if you want to look at it from the glass half full view, it's we should have lost this game going in. Imanaga dominated. Should have won. Should have won this game. The Cubs say that, right? Should have lost this game. And so you just try to go win tomorrow. And hey, you win the series. And I think for the most part, we'll be happy about this Padres road trip, right? Sure, you'd like to sweep the D-backs. You'd like to sweep the Cubs. But you'll take two series wins. You'll take the winning road trip and go home and get ready for the Dodgers and then the Colorado Rockies. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, if you have any complaints about what happened, I did see, I think Haas tweeted Eric Hosmer about how he didn't like Profar being taken out. And I agree. I don't think Profar is a terrible, a terrible defender. Um, Azokar, is he better? Yeah. And Schilt has said when we have a lead late in the game, we're going to go with the Zokar. Like, we have a lead. We're going to go with our defense, right? So I, I understand that, but it's not like they had a three run lead. Jerks and Profar, he's not like Luis Arise level of bad defensively in left field. You know, I, I see him as a, a decent, a guy that can be left out there in big situations when you have a one run lead and he could be up coming up in the lineup. Or it's a tie game, you know? He could be coming up in the lineup. The guy's your best hitter this season. You know? He obviously came up with the home run today out of the leadoff spot because Arise wasn't playing with the left-on-left -left matchup. 958 OPS. Best hitter. I'd leave him in there right now. It's not like he's crap defensively in left field, in my opinion. And that's just the eye test. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I know he was not bad defensively in 2022 and yeah that was a time that was a, a long time ago but I, you know watching these games this year i have not looked at profar and be like oh yep that's a big liability out there defensively so i would have probably kept profar in but that's easy for me to say obviously in hindsight uh but yeah profar he delivered all they needed was one but then it ended up being no they needed more than that so hopefully they can get the series win tomorrow with cease on the mound